What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Life Advice Week 15. First of all, I just want to say that that is a crazy number to say. It's crazy to think that 15 weeks ago today, we were talking about how important it is to make your bed and the importance of building drive and motivation. However, this week, we're not talking about that whatsoever. Today, we're going to be talking about setting boundaries and how you can set boundaries in your professional life, in your personal life, and how that all comes together to sort of give you a better experience throughout your life. But before this video gets started, I would absolutely appreciate it if you guys could go down there, smash that subscribe button, press that like button. It helps us know that you guys are enjoying the content and it tells us to keep making more content. It's been absolutely amazing over here at Point C. Uh, we have some big plans coming the next few weeks and we're really excited for you to see what's coming. So first of all, what does it mean to set boundaries? This can mean a couple different things in your professional and your personal life. I'll give you a really fast example of one that I have in my professional life. I do not respond to emails past 5 p.m. from work, right? So why do I do that? It's so that I have a balance between my professional life and my personal life. That way I'm not always focusing on work. I'm not always focusing on things that don't always need my attention every single moment of the day. Most of those emails can wait until 9 a.m. If it's really important, those people have my cell phone. It genuinely is just very important to make sure that you are able to basically have a balance between your work and your personal life. When you don't have that balance, you're gonna burn out really fast. I can tell you that I've burned out quite a few times, both for this channel and just in my professional life. What's important is though, is that you need to be able to set that balance. And that could be turning your phone on do not disturb, setting your laptop to do not disturb. Once again, just simply not reading emails, communicate that. Don't just start doing it. And then your boss is like, hey, what, what the fuck is going on? Be upfront, be honest about the boundaries that you are setting. And also remember that you signed a contract when you joined that job. And in my case, my responsibilities are nine to five, I'm not responding after five. So it's important to remember those boundaries and remember that you have rights as a human and remember that you are able to tell your boss no. Now, that's not me saying that you should go up to your boss and tell him, no, I'm not doing the work that you assigned me. That's not what I'm telling you to do whatsoever. Please don't do that. But what I am telling you is that do not be afraid to be able to have that work balance between your personal life and your professional life. And really, it's just important from setting that from the start. Don't be afraid to set it. They're, the worst that they can do is be like, no, we need you to respond to your emails. And in most cases, they're not gonna tell you that and they can't enforce that unless you have a specific job where they can enforce that, but that's, that's different and I don't know why you're here. Now let's talk about personal boundaries a little bit when it comes to friends. It could be how they talk to you, how they interact with you. It could be plenty of things like that. You know, it could be physical touch. Some people are very uncomfortable by physical touch. So it's important to be able to set those boundaries and understand with your friends, hey, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I'm not comfortable with and how they can support you with that without just coming off as an asshole or making them feel like you are not communicating with them. It's also important to set it in your relationships with partners as well. Being able to, once again, have those physical boundaries, but also those emotional boundaries. What are things that we are and are not going to talk about? What are those things that I'm comfortable to talk about? There are plenty of people that are dealing with traumas and past issues that they are currently struggling through and working their way through. Because of that, setting those boundaries are overall important so that the people around you know how they can support you if you may be going through those issues or somebody that you know may be going through those issues. It's important to understand those boundaries. The importance of boundaries is, is when we don't have boundaries and we let anything come in, we don't take breaks, we don't tell people no, we don't do these things, you're not going to have a prosperous life. You're not going to be able to be positive. You're not going to be able to basically sit down and tell yourself that you are thriving, you are growing. You're always going to feel like there's some sort of burden on your back because people are constantly breaking down your barrier that you have predisposed, but you haven't communicated what those boundaries are, what those barriers are, and people are constantly either attempting to break those or they are breaking those. And overall, leading to a negative experience and overall hurting your relationship with that person. It basically puts a negative perspective on that person 
and it's going to impact you as you attempt to basically grow as a person and learn what is acceptable for you and for others around you. I'll give you another personal example. I am not afraid to say no to people. Uh, especially recently, I've tried to make it my mission to not take on everything at once because I can't do that. Mentally, that puts a strain on you and it's going to overall hurt you in the long run. Now, you can put up with that for a few weeks or even a few months like I have in the past, but overall, in the end, it's going to hurt you if you are not actively telling people no when you know that you can't take on a workload or you know that you don't have time for a certain task or you don't have time for a certain thing. Don't be afraid to say no. You don't always have to say yes to people. And that's something that I'm always actively learning. I'm always learning, hey, I don't have to always say yes. Another thing for me is understanding that I don't always have to be responsible for everything where I live. I don't always need to be responsible for every dish that is cleaned or everything that's bought. That is a hard thing for me to deal. I'm kind of a pushover in that way. I do a lot of the cleaning and cooking and stuff like that. So for me, it's kind of like trying to find this balance and not being afraid to tell people, hey, I can't always be the one to do everything. This is sort of a relationship. I mean, we're all roommates, but we all need to be able to communicate and understand what we all want done and how we all can't rely on just one person to do everything because it's not fair to the one person it's going to hurt that person's relationship with everybody and overall is going to turn it into a negative experience and i know sometimes it can be hard to figure out what are your boundaries that is definitely a challenge and i'll tell you kind of how i found mine number one with work it's it's i work in a professional setting and then i also work here online most of my afternoons and nights are dedicated here so that's kind of how I weigh it, right, is where I'm like, look, I have things that are going on in my personal life that I'm not going to put a, put under my professional life. And of course, your professional life has to take first priority from time to time, but it can't always be that number one priority. So for me, it was figuring out what works for me. I didn't like monitoring my emails all the time like I did when I started this job. And, and it more or less made me stressed out. It made me not be able to unwind at night, uh, especially when my email, or when my phone would ring and I thought that it was an email. Maybe it wasn't, right? But that's just the example that I'm giving here is that I was quickly looking at it and not focusing on what's important and once again, setting those boundaries so that I am able to have a prosperous life. And also setting personal boundaries can be a little tough. It's number one, finding what makes you uncomfortable is the first step that I would say. What are some situations where you feel uncomfortable? Once you find those situations that make you uncomfortable, you can sort of use that to create your boundaries. You can kind of look at it and say, okay, so when somebody touches me, that's what makes me uncomfortable. And you know, it may not be every single person, right? It, it could be with a certain person or it could be in certain situations. So it's important to be able to stop Look at it and say, okay, is this truly something that makes me uncomfortable most of the time? And then you're able to set that boundary and make sure that you're setting that boundary with everybody. And don't expect people to just understand, hey, this person has a boundary with physical touch all of a sudden. This person has a boundary all of a sudden when we talk about uh, certain animals or whatever it may be for you. All of a sudden you have this and you can't expect people to all of a sudden know your boundaries. They're not going to. That's not how the world works. That's not how the human mind works. We're not here to be fucking passive aggressive, right? And, and look, and I don't really expect that uh, most of the audience is male and it's it's more of a uh, female presenting thing because of different hormones and things like that and because of how we, it, it's because of how we all read body language differently and emotional language differently. Men, we need that shit fucking spelled out. Let's be real, boys. We need that shit fucking spelled out. So don't be passive aggressive about it. Be honest and open with the people around you with the boundaries that you're setting. And don't be afraid to change those boundaries, set new boundaries, find what works for you. The important is, is finding something that makes you feel comfortable so that when you are around people, you are able to socialize, you are able to grow, you're able to still have fun, but you still have some sort of boundary and you're not being bombarded with uncomfortability all the time. We talked about this the last couple of weeks and I want to make that clear. We talked about uncomfortability quite a bit the last few weeks. I don't want you to be uncomfortable 100% of the time. When you're ready to grow, uncomfortability can help. 
but that's not what you need every single moment of the day. And that's sort of the importance of that boundary is that you're setting up a foundation that you're able to support yourself while you're working to grow, be a better person and work on yourself. You're not able to do that if you don't have those boundaries, but also at the same time, if you're, if you're uncomfortable all the time, you're not going to be able to grow. If you're constantly uncomfortable, you constantly feel that you're being attacked or assaulted in some way, or that you just feel that you're not being supported, you're not going to be able to grow. Uncomfortability can be great, but that's more for stepping inside of comfort zones that you're not familiar with and trying out new things. Don't be afraid to experiment like we talked about two weeks ago. So every single week, I try to challenge you guys to practice these skills. And this week, what I'm going to challenge you to do is I want you to look at social situations or your professional life. Whatever way that I talked about today that sounded interesting to you, I want you to sit down and figure out, do I need a boundary for any of those things? Am I one of those people that responds to emails past 5 p.m.? Am I responding at 9 p.m.? Am I one of those people that is not telling my friends or family how they're making me feel when they touch me or what they say to me that is making me uncomfortable? If you're not doing those things already, I want you to sit down this week and I want you to figure out a situation where maybe you could set a boundary. What's a situation that makes you feel unhappy or uneasy when one of those things happen? I want you to be able to find a moment and figure out what could I change? What can I tell people? What can my action show that I am uncomfortable? Even just think in your past. If there's a certain situation that made you feel uncomfortable or uneasy and it's something that you're like, that could happen again. I want you to practice setting a boundary for that example. And I don't want you to be a pushover, right? Because that's sort of what we're talking about here. I don't want you to simply be a pushover when it comes to your personal space, who you are, and what you do. It's important to have a balance between those lives and to make sure that you're getting the support from people that you need. Anyways, boys, this has been Live Advice with Hunter, week 15. God, that still feels absolutely insane to say. But anyways, boys, I just wanted to let you guys know that I absolutely appreciate you guys. You guys have made 2023 and so far the start of 2024 amazing. And I'm just excited to see where everything goes. I just once again want to mention, go down there, hit that subscribe button, press that like button. That way we know that you guys are enjoying the content and I know that you guys want to see more of this amazing content. I also just want to say that I hope that you guys are ready for what's coming later this week. We have some great, amazing things coming, and I'm really excited for you guys to see it. We have a returning face for the old school fans. Anyways, boys, have a wonderful rest of your day, and peace.